Welcome back to Heart. We're less than three weeks to go to the elections. Voting rights remain under attack in a lot of states. Last week, the U.S. Supreme Court upheld a North Dakota state voter ID law, which could negatively affect the state's Native American voters. And in Georgia, Secretary of State Brian Kemp, who's also the Republican candidate for governor, hmm, put tens of thousands of voter registrations on hold, which is his term, which the Associated Press found disproportionately affects African American voters. And on Monday, in Jefferson County, Georgia, dozens of African American senior citizens headed to the polls in the first day of one of in-person early voting were ordered off the bus. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported the decision came directly from County Administrator Adam Brett, who told the outlet Jefferson County Administration felt uncomfortable with allowing senior, sen senior center patrons to leave the facility in a bus with an unknown third party. How scary. I'm joined by Judith Brown, Diana's co-director of the Advancement Project, an old friend of the show, Jason Johnson, politics editor of TheRoot.com, and Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Votes Matter. She was on that bus in Georgia. Latasha, what do you think was up that day that got all of those voters off the bus? Why did that happen? Who did it? You know, it was the county administrator, but I think it speaks to, particularly when we're talking about rural communities, how there are folks who have unchecked power and have had power so long that they feel that they have the right to make decisions, to use that power in an abusive way to make their, have the right to make decisions for other people that actually interferes into their vote. So the county, uh, the county administrator actually made the call to tell the, uh, the, the director of the center that the people of the bus had to get off. And that's, quite frankly, he made a unilateral decision decision based on the fact that he didn't know who the people were. Well, we had spent two hours with that community. So at yeah. the end of the day, the people had made that decision. That was not his call. Well, you know, uh, well, you know the history. We'll get to it in a minute. But it seems to me that uh, I've spent most of my life understanding pulling operations in politics. That you go to the voters in their homes, you go to their community centers, you go to their churches, you pull them out, you get to the polls so that your side wins. That's what politics is about, pulling getting people to the voting place. Did this person, this administrator of the county, did this person, Adam, know, Adam Brett, did he know that the people on the bus were African-American? Did he know that they potentially were going to vote Democrat? What was his motive? Absolutely. He actually says, if you look in his statement, and when we went to talk to him, because we actually went back to talk to him on yesterday, what he said was that because our organ, the organizer that was in the community that we were working with happened to be affiliated with the Democratic Party, that he felt that this was a partisan event. It was not a partisan event. She yeah. happened to be, while she was a Democrat and connected with other pieces, that once again, that was not his call. That was certainly an issue of voter suppression, because who is he to make a choice for other grown own able-bodied adults of where they to go and who they are to associate with. Latasha, you strike me as a, you strike me as a very uh, aggressive person, which I applaud. Should people who get in these situations next time, when they feel that there's some muscle coming at them from authority figures, then they really wonder: Should they be more pushy than your people were? Should they just say, "Damn it, out of our face, we're going"? Is that possible in these situations to confront power? I think you have to have a delicate balance, because in many of these rural communities, their positions of power is very interconnected in terms of the politics and the economics. So, so oftentimes, people who have the political power also have the economic power. And there's usually repercussions, particularly in rural communities. So yeah. I think you have to walk a delicate balance. And we knew that, which is why we didn't push it at the time. We knew that we were going to resolve it. And since that time, just to report, many of those voters, many of those seniors have already voted. Um, and, I, and so there was a delicate balance in being able to make sure that you do no harm. First, you do no harm. That one, yeah. that we recognize to figure out what was happening, but also give the opportunity that we are recognizing that in these rural communities, there can be a repercussions. Yeah, so I, I think understand. ultimately, I don't understand as we're what you're going, telling me. You're telling me. You know what I don't know. You're teaching me. Oh, because, you know, a white guy like me absolutely. isn't used to that treatment. You know, I haven't been bothered about voting in my whole life. Nobody's ever gotten my face. Nobody's ever stopped me. But you've been there, and you know that they can get even, right? Absolutely. And I think that's why it's really important for us to recognize that there is a spectrum of voter suppression. Oftentimes, people will question where, the, where, 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 where that was um, voter suppression or not, because it didn't look like a poll tax, or it doesn't look like we're, we're asking how many jelly beans. But there's a spectrum of voter suppression tactics. And actually, anything that interferes from a person's choice to be able to go freely to vote, that in itself meets the very definition of voter suppression.
It seems like uh, Judith, there is a spe there not just a specter, but there's a line all the way back to the days of when Reconstruction, when the Republican Party sold that out in 1876 and went back to Jim Crow, where they've come up with reading this in Greek or the number of jelly beans in this bowl right. or all these incredible crappy ways to screw a person. Right, or laws like they have in Florida, where you can't vote if you had a you were convicted of a felony, put into the Florida Constitution in 1868. And so yes, there's a spectrum. And what's happening in Georgia is that 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 legislature, the secretary of state, and local officials, are, what they're trying to do is make it harder to get on the rolls, harder to vote, but easier to get off. So we're seeing everything from difficulty from registering to kicking people off the rolls. But then, as Latasha said, the things that are in the middle, the intimidation that happens when police are at the polling place, where poll workers That's are right. turning people away and mm -hmm. not giving them their That's rights, right. and then these acts of intimidation that are subtle. What about this exact match thing? Oh, yeah. So well, well, if you have a hyphen between, say you get married, my wife is C Cunningham Matthews, but she left out the hyphen. It's two names, a middle name and a last name. If you go by the middle and the last name as your formal surname, right. And you don't have it in some form, right? Not in your checkbook or somewhere. They can deny you to vote. They'll knock you off. And here's the worst part. And they won't tell you, right? So you don't know until you show up in the voter <laughs> booth. And we've talked about the fact that, you know, how many marbles are in a jar, you know, how many bubbles come out of a bar of soap. Exactly. Is that match, true? Yeah. These are actually true things that were actually done <laughs> during Jim Crow. Basically saying, if you write your own name wrong, in our opinion, that's a literacy test. I mean, you've literally got literacy right. tests going on in Georgia. But that's not just all. You have these larger bureaucratic problems in Arizona where the Department of By the Motor way, during this Blasey Ford thing, we're all over the place on that. I call her Dr. Ford. Some women more feminists would say, you got to say <laughs> Blasey Ford, even though there's no hyphen. I mean, we're still having <laughs> figured Judith that Brown one. Diana, well, we, well, every yeah. time I go to the polls, there's confusion about which name to look it up under. And if you're if I'm in Georgia, forget about Tell it. Tell me what you prefer. Just I'm to get that straight. Dianus. <laughs> one word. Okay, one word. Well, let's talk about where this stands. What do you tell what do you tell, because this is your expertise, what do yeah. you tell people who come in deep south areas where there's trouble, there could be trouble anywhere, right. when you get to the polls and somebody starts messing with you, yeah. what do you tell them to do at that moment? You waited in line, That's right. you get to the place, the person there with, they always have glasses with chains holding their glasses, right. very, right. very local and traditional. <laughs> you, that person, there seems to be a problem with your name here. What do you say? Well, we tell them, do not leave. Right. Number one, you keep asking, ask the that's judge right. at the place, the election judge. But ultimately, there's a ballot of last resort, and that's called a provisional ballot. We don't want you to use it first because it's the one that gets counted last, but we do want you to fight for that right. You can also call 1-866-R-VOTE, which is the... So it's all right to raise line. a modest stake. That's, stink. that's yes. right, yeah. that's right. And start talking. And their poll workers make mistakes also. So and bring, bring, and bring every single piece of documentation that you can. Uh, at my old university, when they tried to keep college kids from voting with student IDs. The university provided all the kids with an energy bill from how much they paid in tuition to pay the bills so they could prove where they live. Bring your documentation, bring your IDs, bring your driver's license, and bring other people. That is how you fight this voter suppression. A lot of this comes from the fact right. that you have uh, voting organizations and the DMV so almost working together yeah. to keep you from voting. If you have your documents, you can fight for this it. This is not the Department of Motor Vehicles. Right. Right. It's, not a, it's not a privilege, it's no. a right. It, Push. Thank you, Judith Brown, Dianis. Thank you, Jason Johnson. And it's nice to meet you, Latasha Brown. Go for it. Up next.